Genevieve? Hello there. Why don't you have a seat right over there? No, I'm not Chris Hansen. This is Bad Movie Review with another stunning classic from the bargain bin. Uh, today I watched Werewolf vs. the Vampire Woman. That's right. The werewolf fighting a vampire woman. It's a pretty straightforward premise, right? This little Spanish gem comes to us from 1971 and it's approximately 80 minutes long. It's actually slightly over that. Now you'd think that vampires and werewolves being natural enemies... I don't know, I'm just making this stuff up now. No, the, the, this is actually a part of a series that was done in the 60s and 70s up until I think 2004... Uh, Paul Nashy, I'm pretty sure I'm pronouncing that wrong, N-A-S-C-H-Y. He's the king of Spanish horror films. He's appeared in 13 movies playing the same character of Waldemir Daneski. I'm sure I pronounced that wrong too. Um, Waldemir is uh, the, a werewolf, obviously, and in each movie... He um, has some wacky adventure, whether he's fighting vampires or locals or supervillains or whatever. Um, some of these movies are actually really good. This is the, I believe, the fourth movie in the franchise, uh, followed uh, Fury of the Werewolf. And it picks up where the previous movie left off, um, which is uh, surprising. Um, he also co-wrote a lot of these movies, uh Paul Nashke, not not the character. That would be weird. Uh, and generally, I don't like that when an actor is one of the co-writers. Um, but in this case, I have to say it was uh, an interesting choice. All right, let me set, set up the plot here. Um, two idiots extract some silver bullets from an alleged werewolf. And this, of course, brings them back to life. And... He promptly kills them. And they get hideously killed, obviously. Uh, meanwhile, two young ladies from F Paris, I believe, somewhere in France, they show Paris in there, uh, venture to Hungary in search of an alleged vampire and black magic partitioner. Uh, well, at least her grave, because she's been dead for a long time, stabbed with a silver crucifix. Naturally... They're dumb enough to accidentally resurrect the vampire. And things get weird straight away. There's some random zombie for no apparent reason. Um, but that was actually kind of a cool little throwaway. Because it reminded me of Tomb of the Dead. Uh, yeah, this was a... I would, I would like to say it's an awful movie. But at the same time, it's a classic. Because it was a shockingly fun film. Um, the, the English dubbing was actually a really good job. I thought they, they took it seriously. It didn't sound like a seventies porno. And for a Spanish horror film, it's got a pretty strong following. Uh, most versions of this movie you're going to find have really poor film quality. Really, really poor. It was obviously filmed with really cheap film. Uh, there's a lot of budget issues on all these type of Spanish horror films. And this one is no exception. Uh, there is a digitally remastered version that Amazon just put out not that long ago. It's an Amazon exclusive. I highly recommend getting that print because most of the others are pretty terrible. You can find this and a lot of the other movies in multi-packs. And they tend to be like former 3D movies or just really awful quality. Uh, but the English dubbing was shockingly good. Um, let's see. Um, it, it's a little dark, too. Like, visually dark, not thematically. 
uh, and the the budget is just so incredibly low. Like I've seen, I think Dark Shadows had a better budget than this, but I've seen TV movies with way better budget. It's a very character driven film, and it's not, uh, you know, it's more plot oriented and character development. So it's not an action movie. So if you like gothic horror, you're probably gonna like this film. If you want fast-paced action and gore and blood and guts and dismemberings, not the movie for you. The little bit of blood that is in this is obviously fake and there's not a whole lot of it. It's not spraying all over the place or anything. It's very tactfully done overall. Um, it, It can seem a little boring and slow to people that don't like gothic horror. And that's probably most modern audiences because it's, and there's a sort of a cultural thing with the, the way movies are made in Europe versus the way they're made in the States. In the States, it's a little more, um, get to the point kind of thing. And in a lot of these European movies from the sixties and seventies, they were a lot, uh, more build up and they were dragged out a little bit more to kind of give the characters time to develop and build an arc and motivation and all the stuff that, you know, don't involve explosions. There's also no nudity, so don't get your hopes up on that one. But I was real happy with the actors. I thought they all did a good job. And um, the, the just the makeup was pretty awful. The vampire woman looked really good, the blood countess or whatever. She looked really good. It had a real pasty, sickly complexion to her that was almost a greenish tinge because of the bad coloring in the film. But she looked really cool. And the vampire, or the werewolf rather, uh, woof. The transformation scenes were absolutely stupid looking. But the movie was a fun ride. It was a good horror film. Um, has kind of that same feels like a lot of the hammer horrors did where it's very character driven. So I like that. And at 82 minutes, it felt a little longer cause it is a little slow in parts, but it worked for this movie. If you like those type of movies, if you're looking for action, go somewhere else, go rent underworld. Um, but if you like Gothic horror and good, uh, horse setup, this is it. This has more of the classic, black magic themes and you know weird supernatural events people walking down creepy hallways stuff like that it, it's got a lot more built up and um yeah I've, uh, it's not gonna be for everyone i enjoyed it because i like gothic horror films but i have to kind of be in the mood for it so i recommend this one because if you really like horror films you should like this movie uh, you can look past the budgeting issues and see the story that they were trying to tell. And it's an interesting story, especially if you've seen the other films with, uh, Waldemir, uh, D- Daninsky, uh, as the, the werewolf. Cause those are actually pretty well written. And, uh, Paul Nashi is really good at writing some Gothic horror stuff. He just never seemed to get a good budget break. So give this one a chance. If, if you're more action-oriented, uh, you might want to check out like Underworld or America Werewolf in London or something like that. But this one is much slower pace, much more build-up, and then the, you know there's the final battle kind of thing. So if you're into gothic horror, check it out. If you're not, you might want to look somewhere else. And that's going to do it for this movie. And uh, be sure and check out some of my other broadcasts, and we'll catch you next time.